And so we're going to be going over Gomming, his kit, because he actually looks like he has a lot of potential. He looks really good. His kit's a little bit weird to decipher, but I'm going to be putting it in the simplest terms and just going over what he does, the meat and potatoes of that, and just different numbers, different team comps, and possibilities while running this character. He's another plunging character, so big surprise. With Cloud Retainer coming out with a new plunging type meta, we're getting a new plunging 4-star. But he is going to be a free 4-star, most likely at Lantern Right next patch, so it's important to talk about him. So what does he do exactly? So essentially, Gomming, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is a 4-star Pyro Claymore main DPS that will focus on plunging damage infused with Pyro with a high base attack as of now. His plunging attack solely based off his skill and his burst just caters to his skill. He's just generally centralized around plunging. His burst also provides healing, resistance and eruption, damage buffs, as well as allowing you to continuously loop your skill. I'm sure a lot of you seen the leaked footage of him and it's like, it looks really aesthetically pleasing and a lot of fun, but it doesn't really make sense by watching it what he's actually doing. So to break it down, his skill launches you forward, which does absolutely nothing to enemies, but then this also allows you to spring upwards, and he does a plunge attack confused with Pyro. This will consume 15% of his HP, but one of his passives that you'll unlock later on at level 6 or 70 will also allow you to gain back 10% of that HP if you connect with an enemy. So as long as you're landing your plunges, you're going to lose 15% HP, but you're also going to gain 10% back, so you'll only actually lose 5%, which isn't crazy whatsoever. And this is what his entire kit is revolved around, using his skill to plunge and do pyro plunging damage, kind of like a pyro zhao if you will, and it's skill damage, so that's going to be your main focus, your main talent. And his skill takes 6 seconds to cool down. But when you actually use his burst, for one thing it looks really cool because he gets this like neon glow to him. He summons this like cat lion little companion that will circle around him and deal an initial burst of pyro damage as well as healing 30% of your HP. It also increases your damage and resistance and eruption and as long as your HP is above 50% and this is the kicker, then your little companion will leave and come back and it will reset your skill allowing you to enter like a continuous loop of him using his skill, resetting it with your companion. So his skill is actually going to reset his burst in a sense, and his burst will keep resetting his skill as long as you're landing these hits, and as long as your HP doesn't fall below 50%. That is the main key here. If it does, I don't think it's the end of the world, because he can gain back his own HP with his passive, but you are going to gradually lose HP over time and with team members like Farina for example are just taking damage naturally this is something to consider but we're gonna get more into that in a second so in essence you're using this character you don't use his regular attacks whatsoever you pop his burst you do pyro damage you get that resistance that buffs whatever then you use his skill and then you can continue this loop of using your skill plunge damage that's also pyro and you keep resetting this and this loop continues as long as you stay above 50% or at least do your best to try to for as long as possible depending on the team comps you're running. And he's meant to be a main DPS that just plunges with his skill and his burst just helps him do that more often and gives him buffs. That's essentially what he is. And like I said, one of his passives are actually going to give you healing back and you will lose HP using his skill but you'll gain some back with one of his passives. His second passive though if you do fall below 50%, you'll gain a 20% increase in your healing. His kit even wants to get you back above 50% to keep doing this cycle. But if you already are above 50% with the second passive, then you'll just gain an extra 20% pyro damage buff, which is awesome. I'll admit his kit's a little bit odd, especially on paper, but I think it's going to be really good and pr quite strong, to be honest with you. Now, I'll just rhyme off his constellations, just like the meat and potatoes of them really quickly, because he is going to be a 4-star, his constellations are much more relevant and viable. C1, when you use your burst, the companion resets your skill, you'll gain an additional 25% HP. For his C2, if he overflow heals, so if he heals more than he needs to, his attack will increase by 20% for 5 seconds, which is pretty nice. For his C4, it just gives you more energy using his plunge on a hit, and for C6, 20% crit rate increase and 40% increase on crit damage and larger area of effect plunge with pyro damage. That's actually pretty good constellations and pretty reliable, pretty solid. As for builds for weapons, your typical 4 star offensive oriented weapons with attack percent, crit rate or crit damage, whatever you have the best investments in right now, 
you know, some five-star options like the Wolf's Gravestone, all the offensive-oriented claymores that you have that have crit damage, crit rate, or attack percent in some form. He doesn't really need energy recharge or anything like that because unlike Zhao, it's his skill that's his primary plunging offensive weapon and his skill resets every 6 seconds and doesn't require energy. Not to say some energy isn't going to be bad on him, but he's going to have a 60 energy cost on his burst which isn't crazy either. And we'll get into team comps in a second. But as for actual artifacts, well, I would say the Marichuse Hunter is going to be his best in slot on paper because of all his HP fluctuations and changes, especially if he's paired with Farina or something like that. But having like a two-piece pyro, two-piece attack percent like Gladiator, whatever artifacts you have that are the best and best substats, like that'll be really good on him as well. I don't think he's going to be super complicated to build, pretty straightforward. As for team comps right off the top of my head, well obviously Farina, Zhongli, Bennett, Cloud Retainer, you know obviously they're going to go well together being plunge meta, right? But depending on different elemental types you want, I think like Rosaria, Ganyu, if you're running like a Melt comp, or if you're running Vape, Yalan, Xing Cho. Like I talked about Farina, Kokomi, she might even be able to help keep him above 50%. Farina might actually make it hard to stay above 50% at C0, but with Cloud Retainer also on that team comp, or maybe Bennett, I don't think it'll be that hard. It's really hard to say, just on paper reading it, how exactly this will work and how efficient his skill and his burst will work together. And another one I want to talk about is Overload. This is a hard one because we're getting Chivalrous in 4.3 the second half, which is going to buff Overload comps. I do think he would probably be pretty decent, but it all depends on the knockback that Overload causes. Will this screw up his plunging? That's the, that's the trick right there. We don't know. So unless we actually get to see it live and how much it's going to knock back, will it knock it out of range for him? Maybe because at C6, he gets a bigger area of effect for his plunge, so maybe at C6, Overload is viable. Again, these are all things and hypotheticals that we just have to actually see in the field to know for sure. But on that note, that's pretty much his kit summarized for you and all we know so far. Remember, numbers can change, but essentially, he's just Pyro Zhao. He's going to be plunging with his skill, his burst is going to buff, heal, add some resistance and help him like continuously use his skill over and over again as long as you're above 50%. If you go below 50%, his kit will actually buff your healing until you get a back above 50%. So depending on the constellations and the team comp you have, this is going to vary. But I do think he's going to be somewhat versatile, Pyro's a good element, he looks a lot of fun to use, so keep these all in mind. Hope this was helpful, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you are going to build him. He's more than likely going to be free in 4.4, so I know I'm going to try him out. He looks a ton of fun. And on that note, we will see you all in the next one. Later.